just going to do a little bit of a small painting video um, and then we'll be back tonight doing some more painting so you definitely want to take a look and check out the channel um, it's kind of an overall video I'm doing not only some painting you can see a very large demon friend if you want to check out the video of me actually building this model or the majority of the build uh, you can check that out I actually finished it primed it got it all done um, I also am going to do a little kind of quick review of mystery uh, studios which is a Etsy company or it's on Etsy uh, and they do some blood bowl models and then we of course were working on our curse city guys so um, just kind of play it all in shot because we may work out a variety of this we're going to focus on the big model and this small little model review for today um, but I wanted to take a look and yeah this is pretty cool I've been actually wanting these models for a long time um, and I wanted to do some sort of review of the company um, that makes them because they are pretty cool guys pretty interesting it's actually a company from Russia if you can believe it um, that makes the models so it's pretty pretty awesome uh, and as you can see we got the uh, demon lord done and this model is just massive and insane um, and I got it all primed up and it just looks unbelievable the detail we're gonna so it's like a pseudo model review of him too uh, that we'll be doing so without further ado let's get to it so again you can see here they were established in 2012 uh, mystery studios I just love the packaging they have a lot of different models you can find them on Etsy uh, so although this is a games workshop stream or a Warhammer stream uh, I wanted to give this company a spotlight because I was able to get some models from them uh, you can check them out like I said on Etsy um, and these are going to be from these are some Blood Bowl related things and I love their little sticker it's like a it's literally a stamp they use a stamp to seal it which I think is pretty awesome or a replica of a stamp and the company has a very like steampunk I love the steampunkish logo but yeah their models are very cool they even make like um some terrain and things uh let me just see before i go in there uh we are proud to introduce parts of our studio we produce collectible miniature models that are used in tabletop games dioramas uh, our studio is an alliance of painters sculptors who are fond of molding Thank you for your interest in products. Very, very cool. Like I said, Mystery Studio. Check them out on Etsy. You guys can see how it's packaged. Oh, and it's like nice and felty. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can see, very nicely bagged. And they give you a little sticker of their company, which is pretty cool. So they give you a little sticker. I love that because they have this like very steampunkish feel. That's very cool. And for folks that may not know what I got, I will show that off in just a minute. Oh, geez. Okay. And uh, I might actually, if I have, I think I have what I need to do this. Um, so in Blood Bowl, there are two announcer characters. And you can see he actually gives you an alternative orc helmet. But there are two characters, which is Bob and a vampire. And so he's done, um, he's done models of them. The detail on these models are really really good um they're resin models very nice attention detail but if you've ever played the blood bowl game uh, on the computer i i know bob is the uh ogre character <coughs> announcer and then the other is do they have it on here I forget what I forget what his name is, but he's a vampire. It's a vampire and an ogre. 
and you can just see the detail. The detail is so good. The skulls are so good. And what's interesting is they give you like a Sherlock Holmes head. I don't understand the reason. But I guess they give you the Sherlock Holmes head because if you don't want to use it for Blood Bowl, you can like turn him into another character if you want. Same thing with this. If you're not looking for Blood Bowl, you could just turn him into uh, an orc for some reason. I don't know why he gives you the extra stuff. I'm going to be making them for their Blood Bowl counterparts, but um, I just thought these were awesome. Um, and I actually don't have what I need, so I will be throwing them back in the box. But I wanted to do a little review of them because uh, I'm actually going to be using him as a star player. So he'll be on... I'll, I'm going to use him because he actually can be a star player on the Ogre team. Um, which is funny because he was a former Blood Bowl player. He was on one of the teams. And then they give you, of course, the bases for them. Which I, what I do like about this company is they actually give you, they're, they're not GW official bases, but they are the actual sizes for the bases. Which is very, very cool. All right, without further ado, let's get into this. Now you'll notice, I actually left the base separate. I didn't put the base on, and there's a reason behind it. I'm actually gonna put some terrain on that base. So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it, uh, it I'm not gonna paint it like I normally do. I'm gonna do some different things to the base. So I know for a fact. Whoa. All right. I know a couple things that I want to do with this particular model. Oh wow. I have so much stuff inside of where I paint. It's a, it's crazy. And again, this is basically one of the demon princes and he got a new book that came out um and in that new book he uh he is part of the cursed realms uh storyline So I'm just going in and doing some, uh, this is Apothecary, uh, Apothecary White. Because I want to give his skin kind of a white tone. Versus doing him as like a... Pale Demon. And I want to start off with that nice uh, pale color. Because I want to eventually throw some other both colors and things in there and that'll give me the ability to do like veins and other types of stuff uh, on this model now of course he's a big model so these are always fun to work on because you do have a lot of details so there is going to be a lot of details to play with because there always is but when you're working with a big model like this it makes the painting a lot faster because um you'll see although there will be a lot of fine details because this model is very detailed um it's going to make my painting life a lot lot easier than it normally does the thing that's going to be interesting on this guy is that there's a lot of blending opportunities because of the way that he is so i'll be working with uh painting those all in and i'm just really trying to get a nice tone to, uh, to get all of that skin. So I'm just working on that base skin tone, and then I'm gonna be building in some other stuff. And if you guys have questions while I'm painting, as always, please do not hesitate to throw those up in the comments. Uh, I always like to give a big shout out to uh, Undiscovered Realms, which you can check a link to them in my page. Uh, they are the sponsors for this video. Uh, they're always getting me all hooked up. They always are getting me my model stuff. Um, and they got some really cool stuff now. I mean, not only do they have the GW stuff, which they stay very current and order all the great new stuff that's coming out, um, but they are also getting into uh, Star Wars Legion and also Marvel Crisis Protocol. So they're gonna be hooking me up and getting me some other things for those games, um, which I am very, very excited about. So I'll have a lot more of that model painting happening. I know I took a little bit of a break for Marvel Crisis Protocol, but I'm gonna be 
coming back with a strong vengeance because I'm going to be getting a lot of those models. Um, and we're going to start to get better to my goal of actually playing some games. So uh, my big push, uh, and I may be in the process of getting or hiring. I, I don't know. I may... I, I'm against it. I don't want to, but I may have to. St I may have to pay people to paint some of my terrain, just because I don't know if I have the time to paint all the terrain. Um, specifically my fantasy terrain. Um, my my modern terrain. I actually have painted quite a bit of it, but I. Uh, So I may, uh, I may have to start outsourcing some of that. I was trying to avoid doing that because um, I, I had a very strict vision. I wanted, you know, obviously everything that you guys saw on my channel to be what I painted. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of different reasons as to why I want to do it that way. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons of why I want to do it that way is because um, not that I don't want another it's not like for a selfish like um like I'm the best painter in the world and it can only be my my things that you see because it's definitely not what how I feel about art um but it's more about I want to give the artist fair due and it gets tricky when you are um you know in the in the level that I am which is you know definitely you guys are supporting me and your support means the world and I thank you for that um, but you know, I'm a little, I'm a little bit of a lower fish on the totem pole. So like, as much as you all are supporting me, um, I don't get, you know, I don't have the larger audiences. So like to, to share the spotlight with other artists, um, it could be a little tricky, you know, cause I don't want to have a situation where, you know, I, I go into a, an agreement like that. And then all of a sudden You know that artist wants more going on or they want more piece of the pie or like i have to start like fighting with artists i don't want to do that and obviously the other reason i want to my goal was to to paint everything myself is because i want to give you guys a lot of content to watch so you know i don't want to I want I want to show you as much of the process as possible. What I'm but what I'm finding is that there are just so many hours in the day, and I also am not fully set up in a way where I feel confident I can give you guys a great experience of me painting terrain yet. Um, I don't have the certain types of cameras yet that I want, and uh, so. But like I said, if, and I thank you guys for understanding that, because it's always good when you guys do understand. But um, I, I will have a lot of cool things. I have, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have, even doing like a little bit of special on Hero Forge, I'm gonna be getting a few of those models so I can start to uh, go and review and, and take a look at how they do their stuff over there. Uh, Cause I'm gonna be getting like a, a good chunk of them, a good chunk of models that uh, I can yeah this is real real layered like I said that's what's cool about these big models you can you can paint them quickly but like but there's still there is a lot of detail so like even though you're gonna paint the model quickly you have a lot of detail that you have to utilize while you're there. So it, it becomes a very interesting process when you're painting stuff like this. And you, and you can see just how like really cool. I, I really like this apothecary white. It's gonna give them that like, you know, like It's gonna give him that death skin so he's gonna look like a pale demon 
I, I could have went with red. I could have went with a couple of other things, but I like the paleness, and then I'm going to do something more elaborate for inside the wings. I know what I want to do there um, and how I want to go over that, so I'll do those as well, but it's going to be... It's going to be a nice contrast of stuff. Because on the box, they, they go for a much more darker tone for him. And what's nice about going the route I'm going is if I find... Oh, sorry. It's just focusing on the wing. Um, if I find that I don't like this paint scheme, like if I want to go into a different idea, um, it's very, very easy for me to change it. because I'm starting with such a light base color that I can really, on a flip of a dime, like, darken this up or go darker if I want. Yeah, they the way, the way that they do it on the box, they give them a very dark paint scheme. Um, I don't know if I want to necessarily do that or not. Because you'll see, once I start getting some of the other layers of color in there, it'll it'll make more sense the way that I've, I've decided to paint him. I'm just going to do the hand really quick. Get that. Oh, he's got a ring on there. That's okay. I just realized I painted over it. Um, But you can see already just how nice that, that apothecary white looks. Like you'll see, you'll see how nice it's gonna it's gonna look and it's gonna like really give um, really give this nice feel to them. And then what it's also going to do, the reason why I like going with um, with a a uh, a lighter color for the actual um, skin is that you'll see how brilliant it's going to make all of the the other. I mean, like I said, what's nice about this is if I decide as a painting, you know, oh, I want to make certain details of the face a little bit more dark. Um, it's only giving a light tone right now, so I could always go back over those. He's going to start to make a lot more sense as I get a little bit more of the color going on him. I'll probably, I, funny enough, even though he's a very detailed model, I'll probably get him painted pretty, pretty quickly just because of the way in which I, I, I have a pretty good uh, indication of what I want to do for his paint scheme. So you're gonna see him. Oh, I gotta cut that off. All right, I'll I'll just paint all of it, but I'll cut it. I'll trim it. Ah, that sucks. I'm gonna have to 
like we white mad eye. Oh yeah, when you guys see where where we're gonna go with this, it's gonna be freaking dope. I know exactly what I want to do. Cause that, especially the white that I picked, that apothecary white, when you when you team it with this, it's like magical. It looks so good. Cause I've done this for so many undead characters. you see how this is going to all play out. It's going to look so good when it's done. And as always, guys, if you're watching and you have questions or you have painting questions out there, don't hesitate to uh, give me a holler or let me know. We'll probably do. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit more painting, which I knew this was only gonna be like a half hour, forty minute video. I wasn't gonna go for too long, but. You guys can already see just how cool this is. Oh, we're gonna do just a little bit of that. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm gonna do for the rest of it. So I wanted to make like some some visible bone structures, and then I'm gonna do a darker tone in there. So I have some I have some very very cool ideas of how I want to do this. But I had I had this idea because I thought it would look pretty fire if we did it like this. A couple little... I'll do those. I'll do those this little things. But you guys are starting to get the idea. He's going to have this really nice... And then we're going to go in and do a lot of, like, emphasis on where we're doing sort of bone as opposed to doing like black claws I wanted to do something and then we'll gore him up a little bit too so we'll gore him up so that he doesn't look you know prim and proper he's not a prim and proper But I didn't want to do them like they have them again. Like I said, the the box has them as like black, and I don't I don't know I don't always like doing models that way. I mean like it's it's okay you could do black, but I don't know black is kind of boring. I want to do something. I wanted to to try to go on the the more striking edge of the spectrum for the color. being really I'm being a little on the sloppy side but that's okay because I'm laying down my lighter colors right now because I know I know I'm gonna I know that I'm going to lay down all right so the claws I might do in black I don't know yet but the great part is if I want to lay black on top of this it's so easy to do that so I'll kind of let that sit with me and see how I like them Yeah, 
and and then like I said I like doing the lighter tone because then when we do effects like the sword and we do other effects on him uh, like if you do gore effects so if I make it so there's blood on him which I am going to um, you're, you're gonna see all of that stuff more And you could already see the, sh the face is taking on shape just by having that done, which looks pretty damn cool. And so you guys can start to see uh, an, an inkling of what... Um, sorry, I was just tidying up his toenails off camera. Um, but like I said, I love this effect when you use that that uh, skeleton horde with the apothecary white because it just looks like it's it's amazing because you you it looks like you have it looks like you have skin. It, it looks so good, like it's coming out of the skin, and I always do the teeth and. I started doing that for my teeth now. I like using the, um, I like using the skeleton horde, uh, and you guys can see a close up of that. I like using the skeleton horde for the teeth because it gives a nice darker sheen to it. And obviously we got a lot of other detail, which is things like, you know, the variety of skulls that are all over this thing. So going back to what I was saying before, like that's the detail aspect of it. So even though it's a big model, what that means for GW is that really on the bigger scale stuff, you get more detail. So they can, they can cram so much more stuff into the model So although you can paint a lot of the model very quickly, um, and the contrast paint really lends itself to allowing me to do that, um, there are so many little details that that's what ends up taking you the longest with a model like this. Is that now you gotta paint in all those little details, you gotta find all those little nuances, so. It, uh, it does become a little bit more of a daunting task. So if you're somebody who is new to the hobby, um, you know, sometimes these big models, you know, definitely can come off a little intimidating. But what I always tell people to do is that if you are, you know, whatever you're starting with, whether it's, you know, something as simple as Blood Bowl or with like less units or if you're playing Age Sigmar or 40K or whatever it is. You know, the thing that I always tell people to go for is go like, go get a box of your regular units, practice painting those before you do your like, your, uh, your named characters or your special characters. Um, and you'll, you, you all will thank me, I promise, because you can, you know, you could experiment on the troops. And if the troops come out, you know, a little bit wonky or not looking as good, like they're just your troop units, so they're not going to, you know, quite, quite literally, quite figuratively to the game, like they will be. You know, and I, and I <laughs> I'm going to say it, it's going to sound funny, but um, you know, they're going to be throwaway units. Um, so visually on the table, like, you know, that's why you want to spend the most time painting units like this, because like, he's not going to go out. I mean, obviously if you tacti tactically put him in the worst possible place on the table, he could die very quickly. 
Um, but if you don't do that, chances are he will stay on the table for a while. So, you know, the idea that Uh, the idea that, whoa. Um, you spend a little bit more time on, you know, a special character like this. Because he's going to be like, you know, I always say the centerpiece of your army. Now, I typically don't do what I'm doing now, but I sometimes I get like this. I, I, you know, I say it a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm like a mad painter sometimes because I, not that I get bored, but like, I'll paint an area. I'll, I'll paint an area, and I'll want to like get further with something so I'll have a tendency to uh, I, I might jump around which I've been known to do um, and that's what I, I sort of just did on this like I, I definitely am, am jumping around to paint different aspects of the model um, So what I'm what I'm sort of doing now, this is because this is where it's going to get a little tricky, because when I do these other ridges, I'm going to want to use different colors, because I'm you're going to see how I'm going to make this um, sort of blend into other stuff um, on purpose. So we're going to have a lot of different things going on from a. Uh, from a standpoint um but yeah i don't usually do this because as you're going to see and and literally like right in this minute um i like to i like to do one color at a time for two reasons one it gives the color time to dry because then i will go back over that color to create some of the variation that i want in that color um, I'm just actually correcting. Yeah, because what happens with contrast paints is they're so awesome because they, you can, you layer them. And so if you go back over the contrast paints, you can bring more darks out of the model. So you can bring these like really, really awesome dark elements out of there. Um, Love doing purple. Ah, I got purple on. It's too much water on this brush, but I like to do that. I like to do that with the contrast, where I I kind of come in and just do a. Uh, like a first pass 
of color which is usually a little bit on the light side so I do I like like just want to spread it and then I'll come in with a more focused brush to do this because also I'm blocking out my colors so like the idea is that I'm actually blocking out what colors I want to have now this is where it gets a little dicey and tricky and this is where Picking a light color like that apothecary white can come back to bite me in the butt. Um, because since it's such a light color, it uh, it 100% does not, um, you know, if I touch anything that's apothecary white, it's gonna very much look, it's gonna have a, yeah, I'm gonna have to do a lot of retouching. So, this is where I say it a lot, like, this is where I, I'm sure a lot of people out there would be like, oh, I don't know why he would even try to build it and then paint it. Why doesn't he paint on the sprues? You know, for a lot of folks that are out there in the hobby, because a lot of people do prefer to do that. Um, but as I say all the time on my channel, I, I don't know how to paint like that. Like, I need, when I'm painting a model, I, I have to see the model. I have to see what I'm painting. So I, I just, I can't figure out color that way. Cause when I see the actual model in three dimensions and I see how the light's hitting it, then I make like color choices based on that. So, you know, I might say to myself then, oh, You know, this clearly doesn't work with this color. This clearly does work with this color. Oh, I need to change this, not that. Like, so you know, I wanna, I wanna have that ability. I'm gonna do red eyes. I'm gonna do red eyes for him. Now watch this. This would be the coolest phenomenon on the planet. The minute I put those eyes in, you guys are going to be like, whoa. And I literally haven't painted like any of this model. But the minute I put the minute I put the eyes in, the eyes go in it's a totally different model now I got to put a little white dot in there I have to get the white of the eyes in there but I just wanted to play with the idea of red eyes if I don't like the eyes I might change them still looks like oh yeah we're gonna definitely have to stop so guys i thank you for watching i'm gonna i'm gonna put a pause in the video here uh we'll come back and do a little bit more but so far so good i really am liking where i'm going with this so so far very much liking where we're going um probably we'll do i might do a little painting off camera just to get them a little bit further along and then we'll we'll look at the other stuff but i do have to get going um, as always, if you guys enjoyed what you saw and want to see more, um, please, please, please um, consider following the video um, or not follow the video, follow the channel. Um, so please sign up to see more. I'm going to be painting him later tonight. We'll get into painting some more of the Curse City models as well. So I'm going to finish up this ogre. Uh, we got some other heroes to finish up and start painting that whole box. So plenty of stuff to see, plenty of stuff to paint. We're going to have Marvel Crisis Protocol, all that good stuff. So as always, please. Thank you uh, for the support. Uh, consider following. Sign up for notifications. 
Uh, again, I want to give a shout out to Undiscovered Realms, the sponsor of this video. You can check them out on my uh, page below. There's a link to their store. Uh, they ship anywhere in the United States. They also, I think, ship internationally. Uh, they do all tabletop gaming stuff. They do Magic. They do um, Pokemon. They do Dragon Ball Super Card Game. Uh, they have Funko Pops, toys, all kinds of cool stuff. So check them out. You can also check out my website, uh, my Patreon, uh, and my uh, tip slash donation button as other monetary ways to support the channel. See you guys later, uh, and I'll see you at the next video. All right, take care, everybody. See you soon.